All right, welcome to WSQ29. Uh, today we're going to be talking about fungi or funguses. <laughs> Um, and really we're going to look at a couple things. This should be a quick one today as we talk about the characteristics that all fungi share. We talk about how fungi reproduce and the roles that fungi play in nature. And this is the last of our uh, WSQs that are related to viruses and bacteria and fungi, what I would call the lesser kingdoms. And then uh, we'll be getting into plants and animals uh, upcoming. So let's jump in there and talk about what fungi are. Uh, to start, fungi are uh, known as uh, eukaryotes. Remember, eukaryote is, uh, as we've learned before, over and over again, and we'll keep bringing it to your attention, eukaryotes are organisms that have a nucleus, right? They have cells with the nucleus, okay? Um, they do have cell walls. Um, fungi are heterotrophs, means that they are going to uh, absorb their food. Uh, we'll talk about that and the structure they use. They use spores to reproduce. All right, and the cells of fungi are arranged in structures that we call hyphae, and we're going to talk about them. So if you just took those, those <coughs> four major things about fungi, fungi are eukaryotes, that's one. They're heterotrophic, that's two. They use spores to reproduce, that's three. And they have specialized structures known as hyphae, that's four. What are hyphae? Hyphae are branching um, thread-like tubes that make up the bodies of multicellular fungi. We can see over here on the left, of course, this is just the, the classic mushroom. Okay, And mushrooms have inside them, they're made up primarily of hyphae. And if you look at the hyphae, hyphae are these branching thread-like kinds of uh, tubes right here. And they allow them to absorb their nutrients and water and the different things that they need in a, a multicellular fungi. Um, the arrangement of the of the hyphae will actually determine the shape of the fungi. And what you'll learn is the different funguses that we see in the world are actually shaped differently. And that shape is just based upon the hyphae and how it's produced, how it's formed. So looking at this again, we have the hyphae, um, the stalk, the gills, uh, the underground hyphae that make up a mushroom. And we'll discuss each of those. When you look at a classic mushroom, the gills, the underside, um, actually are what drop the spores. Okay, and uh, so that's the reproduc reproducing part of the mushroom or the reproducing part of the fungus is found in those spores. Now, one of the things that fungi do that make them kind of unique is uh, how they obtain food. Um, this is an example of uh, a mold, okay, a fungus that's growing on an, a citrus fruit, on an orange. And what fungi do to absorb food is they are really closest to being what I would call filter feeders. If you think of sponges um, in the ocean, sponge are filter feeders. So what that means is they just suck in water and they pull out the nutrients and minerals and small microscopic particles that are their food from the water. Kind of similar to fungi. Fungi will grow on a food source. That's why you always find fungus on sources of food. And the little hyphae here will actually extract the nutrients that they want from the food source okay, and bring that to the rest of that fungus. That's why fungus on a food source will typically grow out. If you've ever seen bread mold, that mold will grow over the bread as it takes over more and more and more of that particular food product to a point where there's no bread left and it's just all it is is a dead fungus at that point because it's run out of nutrients. So that's how funguses obtain food. <clears throat> how funguses reproduce? Well, like I said, most fungi reproduce with spores. That is the most common uh, form of, of fungus uh, being reproduced. Spores are lightweight. Okay, the, the thing about spores, they're protected by a covering that allows them to, to, to last a long time. And they can be carried easily by wind and water and things like that. Um, Spores are, we're going to see spores in plant kingdom as well, uh, so it's not something that's just found here in fungi. And of course we talked about spores um, also, you're seeing spore production, uh, endospores and things like that in bacteria. Um, fungi can also produce through a process called budding. Okay, uh, Budding occurs when a parent cell actually undergoes mitosis and the yeast cell will actually grow from the parent cell. So up here in this image we have an example of budding. So you'd have like a standard yeast cell like we see here and then what you get is you get a little bud that grows out on that yeast cell. This right here and this one here, those will ultimately break off and they'll become new cells. Okay, And that's, that's a process called budding. 
Um, so that happens in uh, fungi as well. Some fungi use this budding process. And occasionally fungi will reproduce sexually um, when hyphae from two fungi grow together and the genetic material is passed along. So if you think of, you know, let's say if we had a fungus on, here's an orange, and you had some fungus, some hyphae here, and some fungus, some hyphae here. And if they intertwine, what can happen occasionally is you can actually get a crossing of the genetic material exchange between them and you actually get um, a sexual reproduction. But that's rare and not as most common. The most common of all ways they reproduce would be by spores. And uh, that's why it was in that original definition. Now we can break uh, fungi into three major groups. Okay, we have what are called sac fungi. This includes yeast and morels and truffles. Right here's an example. Okay, morels and truffles are a type of mushroom that uh, have a totally different design, as you can see. Okay, so those would be sac fungi. These are spore producing, um, and they produce structures in uh, that look like long sacs. Okay, as you can see here. Okay, yeast is a little bit different in this group because it can use budding as well. Uh, how it reproduces and reproduces fastly, uh, quickly. You have club fungi. This would be mushrooms and rusts and puff balls. Okay, I hope you like my little Super Mario Brothers <laughs> mushroom here. Um, these produce spores in the club-like structures. They'll actually, as we saw in the first image, the spores will be produced in the cap, and then they'll fall to the ground, and that's how those uh, particular um, organisms reproduce. And then you have the third group, which are called uh, zygote fungi. And zygote fun fungi are the molds, so fruit and bread molds. Um, these are really, really resistant spores that they produce, and you can see these growing pretty much on um, any type of bread or um, on uh, fruits as well. You can see from this image here, uh, what you get is this mold, and the mold is actually a type of fungus that's growing. It's a living organism. And so those are the three major groups of fungi and really just by looking at fungus you can see that there's a variety of things people might ask well why <laughs> why do we need fungus why do we need all these things well let's just think through them I mean first of all they can provide food right mushrooms and uh, yeast used in making of breads and molds that are used in the making of cheese um, these are really important we definitely need um, these these particular things for food. I love mushrooms personally and cheese and bread, so all those things are something I enjoy. There are also decomposers and recyclers. We read about this with bacteria and with protists. We see the same kind of thing. Um, they break down stuff in the environment uh, that's, that's waste and old, and they can actually decompose that. Um, a negative thing is they can be d disease causing. Um, fungal plant diseases, athlete's foot, ringworm, things like that. Uh, fungal diseases. My father-in-law passed away last year from uh, valley fever, which is a fungus. It's a fungal infection. Um, so they can cause disease and fungus can be a really big problem. Um, I used to have athlete's foot as well and experienced ringworm when I played football. So um, not a very fun thing to have. Other positives, they can be disease fighting. Uh, penicillin is an example of a fungus um, that's, that's actually grown and, and used as an, as an antibiotic and some other antibiotics are what we'd call uh, fungi. There also is this last one's pretty interesting. This is the first time we talked about this is they can be a part of symbiotic relationships. Um, when I use the word symbiotic relationships, what I'm talking about is when you have two organisms that are living um, together in mutual benefit. So what, what I mean by this is the two organisms are not hurting one another, not harming one another, they're actually helping one another. One organism provides a certain service to the other organism and vice versa. A classic example in the ocean would be sharks and sucker fish. You'll see these big whales or these big sharks that have these fish, sucker fish that, that eat the small particles and microorganisms on the shark off of the, the shark's skin. It's a service for the shark because it cleans the shark and keeps them free from disease and it's a service to the sucker fish because he gets food and protection because he's around the big boy. That's the symbiotic relationship we're talking about and lichens are actually a fungus and an algae or an autotrophic bacteria that live together. So you get a fungus mixed with this bacteria or this algae and they live together on lichens typically are found on trees and tree bark. 
they actually help each other. The fungus helps bring moisture and, 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 and water, the things that are necessary for the bacteria or algae to survive, and the algae produces, it's autotrophic, so it produces food that the fungus can draw from it and, and survive as well. So funguses are not all bad, uh, have some really good values to us. So that's the fungus or fungi, and I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. And don't forget to get to haiku, summarize, and question, answer those questions, and I will see you guys in class.